All right, well, everyone here, uh, thank you for attending. I'm Nick Pack, I'm with K2 Systems. I'm a Western Regional Manager here. I live in the Bay Area, uh, actually live in Livermore, Alameda County, which is out here in the Valley. And uh, we have a special guest for you guys today. We have uh, Cameron Stewart. Uh, go ahead, Cameron. How's it going? My name is uh, Cameron Stewart. I'm a senior technical marketing manager with uh, Solar Edge. Been at Solar Edge for seven years and in the industry for 17 years, man. That's a long time. I suppose I should probably turn on my video so you guys can see me. Uh, I lied to you. I'm not allowed to. <laughs> okay. Whoops. Maybe, no maybe we'll get that fixed on this on the side. Yeah, yeah. But uh, happy to be here. Thank you so much, Nick, for inviting us. Uh, can't wait to demo the tools. Absolutely. Uh, last but not least, I just wanted to get a chance to shout out to some of our technical sales team as well in Mexico and here in the United States. Uh, we have Luz Rajano, if you don't mind saying hi really quick. Sure, hi everyone. Um, let me try to turn on my camera. I Second. Okay. The, ho um, the host. The host told me I wasn't allowed to. They said Cameron. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I can I think I cannot turn there my camera. <laughs> but oh. yeah. Um. Well, for the sake of time, we'll just let everybody say hello over the audio. Luz actually is uh, in uh, Chula Vista, and she works with uh, an abundance of your guys' projects. Not to speak for her. I also wanted to get a chance to have Brandon and uh brandon uh, duly say hello as well how do y'all good morning or afternoon you know where you're at thanks for coming in and last but not least we have miguel ortiz who actually does a lot of work on the base design tool here at k2 hello everyone good to, to glad to be here thank you for this um cameo <laughs> Excellent, excellent. Thanks for saying hi, everyone. Uh, just really quick, if uh, just some cleanup on or housekeeping here on the webinar. Uh, if you have any questions, there's a chat button on the side, and we are going to be able to distribute literature uh, to anybody who wants product information about the racking system. And I'm sure we can post some of that too for Cameron's team if anybody wants to get any, information, any more information on Solar Edge. Uh, so we'll be able to give out those handouts. Uh, also, last most importantly here, I wanted to thank Dakota for always getting these webinars pulled together and she makes sure that uh, all, everything's everything's working here on Zoom. So uh, thank you very much, Dakota Lum, our marketing manager. Uh, so let's get started here. Uh, really quick, let me see if I can, there we go. Uh, just over the agenda really quick here, we're gonna give you an introduction to K2 Systems. Uh, Solar Edge will give you an introduction to themselves as well and what hardware they've been making for the industry and software they've been making for the industry. I will go over our K2 based design tool and then I'll push it over to uh, Cameron who will demonstrate uh, the API bridge that we have between the two tools. Uh, so I think everybody's gonna be able to have a, a, a lot of a, a educational experience uh, between the two platforms and how we actually share projects in between them. And then at the end, we'll have a Q and A. Uh, really quick, uh, at a glance for K2 Systems, we are a international racking manufacturer. We have over 210 employees worldwide. Uh, we are distributed over 100 distributors across the globe, and we have uh, 16 gigawatts of installed capacity already. Very excited to be a part of that. That small carport that you guys saw in the beginning, that was actually one of my first carports when I onboarded to the team in 2019. Um, we are headquartered in Germany, but we have offices across Eastern and Western Europe. And of course, our Vista California office, which is actually getting upgraded to Oceanside very soon. We're looking at a very large, a very large building. I think uh, right now our building in Vista is just around uh, 30,000 square feet. And we're going to be moving into a uh, over 50,000 square foot building in Oceanside. Uh, we also have offices in Guadalajara, Mexico. That's where uh, uh, Miguel resides with the uh, K2 Mexico team. And we even have operations down in South Africa, Australia, and of course, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Um, you can see here, these are the countries that we completely service with all of our different systems that we offer. Uh, a little bit of timeline about the company and when we started, K2 was founded in 2004 with adjacent branches growing uh, throughout Europe 
And then finally, uh, uh, K2, uh, Everest K2 was brought to uh, uh, the United States in 2012. And then um, and we continued to flourish across the country into 2020 and into 2021. Um, our tool, real quick, uh, just at a glance, it is a completely free design tool. It, we offer it in a, an abundance of different languages. So you can read in whatever uh, language that you're familiar with already. Uh, we have multiple user accounts that you can have uh, across your, your guys' installation team or your design team. Uh, we have graphical drawings available. We also have uh, API bridges with, of course, Solar Edge and uh, other rack, uh, inverter manufacturers. Uh, just going through this pretty quick so I can get over to Cameron so Cameron can go ahead and drive his presentation. I'll move the slides for you, Cameron. Okay, thank you so much, yeah. Uh, so again, uh, if you haven't used Solar Edge, well, let me introduce you to our amazing product. Uh, we are the number one inverter company worldwide. Uh, residential inverters in the US, I think we're number three commercial inverters in the US. 69.1 uh, million power optimizers have shipped. You know, we're a global company, 2.9 million inverters. We have over, or excuse me, almost 2 million monitored systems. So we heavily incentivize people to connect our product to the monitoring portal. So that way we can get remote O&M and diagnostics. And this tool that we're going to show you today actually is a step towards that. So if you are using K2 systems tool and then the API bridge over to the Solar Edge designer, then you can export it to the monitoring portal and just it streamlines your whole design and installation process uh, quite a bit. Go ahead and the next slide. Uh, so here's our residential solution. So we, when I started seven years ago, we made just the, the optimized inverter. And basically all we have is a power optimizer, a DC to DC converter that sits underneath the solar panel and then it connects uh, down to the inverter, which inverts to uh, AC energy, which is used by your home. Uh, since that, in the seven years that I've been here, uh, we've developed battery systems, energy storage systems, the latest and greatest being our energy hub inverter with our backup interface, and now the energy bank solar edge battery that I'm, I've been working diligently on for the last, uh, for the last couple of years. Uh, we also have smart EV chargers and then smart devices like hot water heaters, sensors, relays, that are all controlled with your solar edge app. So again, putting an emphasis on all that communication and control being in the monitoring portal. Uh, go ahead and go to the next slide. Of course, we offer commercial products too. So our online designer is geared towards residential installers or commercial installers. Uh, so if you're not using our tool, uh, a lot of times you're using a third party tool they don't always have the latest and greatest products in that tool, but you know the Solar Edge tool will always have those new and up and coming things in the tool, so you can design with it. Uh, just trying to make our designers be more efficient. With our commercial solution, we offer power optimizers that go two to one. If you're not using Solar Edge for rooftop commercial, then man, you are missing out. So you should definitely be using Solar Edge for rooftop commercial. And then if you are not uh, using us for ground mount, we'd love to talk to you about it. Uh, but we have our new Synergy inverter that goes out all the way up to 120 kilowatts and can be installed by a single person because it's a modular components that can be easily uh, swapped out. Okay, go ahead to the next slide. Uh, and then what we're going to talk about today is the designer. So before you install, before you sell, you should be using the designer. Uh, next slide. And I'm just going to hit three slides about what the designer is. You know, it's a powerful design tool that you can also use for, you know, sales. And we have a awesome financial indicator that we'll go through, a financial tool, assessment tool. We can not only visualize shading obstructions on the roof, but we can visualize different strings connected to different inverters. Again, streamlining the whole design process. And I, I cannot iterate this enough. If, all of our systems, we again, heavily incentivize you to monitor our systems. And with our monitored systems, uh, you should be using the design tool to get that system into the portal. Because once it's in, once you export the design tool to the portal, now it's in there, your installers can use their phones to scan QR codes and locations of the optimizers. Everything's already set up. So again, just removing those extra steps and layers. And most importantly, 
the Solar Edge designer, you know, we say it's free to use, but really it's a comprehensive, amazing tool that we give to you just as a thank you for using our product. And we want you to be excited about using Solar Edge. It comes with our full suite of products. So go ahead and go to the next slide. So just to recap, uh, new features that we're going to cover today are going to be the site modeling features. I'm going to go into obstructions, and we'll, when we do a live demo of the tool, we'll go through all this. Uh, in the automatic electrical design, there's new automatic stringer that really helps duplicating blocks and obstacles is a huge feature that we're going to talk about. Oh, I usually talk about that when we do commercial. We're going to do a residential design today. Uh, yes. And then for uh, enhanced features, you know, understanding what your system is going to offset, especially with batteries, exporting to the monitoring portal. Again, we already talked about that. Then. And configurable system losses. So we'll go through all those features a little bit later. And uh, go ahead, next slide. And I think that was it. Oh, yeah. We're going to do a live demo. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. If you didn't know why you were here, we're going to do a live demo. That's that's why we're all here. OK, go ahead. Excellent. Excellent. Why don't we go ahead and just jump right into uh, uh, we'll des I'll design an array on our platform, and then we'll push it over to you, Cameron. And you guys can demonstrate what your what the Solar Edge designer is capable of after the project's been dem uh, uh, completed in the uh, in the K2 systems tool. OK, Sounds so good. Um, the first thing I want to go to if we want to get to, uh, onto our K2 base design tool is obviously we want to go to k2systems.com. Make sure that you're actually on the US side of ours. Uh, you're going to be looking for that US symbol right there in your browser. Uh, the second thing that you want to do in the process of doing so to push the, your design over to the Solar Edge designer is make sure you sign up for the Solar Edge designer and have an account. So I'm just going to go into my bookmarks here. Uh, uh, sometimes this little this thing from Zoom gets in the way here. So I'm just going to go here and go to my Solar Edge Designer account. I believe it's there. It is right there. I'm going to make sure I'm signed in, and this is how we can actually port the two projects together. So signed into the tool already. There we are. Uh, Cameron will explain a little bit further on his portion of the tool here, but this is your common projects dashboard that you have. Uh, with Solar Edge, let's go over to the K2 tool. So um, I already have an account. So as soon as I click on this K2 base, it'll actually log me in. But if you want to find out more information about our products or any any uh, any anything that we have to offer uh, here at K2, uh, including the base design tool, go ahead and go here to service. Uh, we have the ability to get in front of tech support if you have questions about the system or components of the system. Um, we have the base online tool uh, splash page right here. Uh, we have feature your project. Let's say that you guys are already installing K2 and you want us to uh, you know, feature your, your project that you recently did in one of our newsletters, helps drive more installers uh, or, or more customers over to your guys, in attention over to you guys if we post a newsletter on LinkedIn or, or any other uh, 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 social media platforms. We have our full training uh outfit here called base camp this is where you can see all of our instructional videos about the uh about the product but uh we want to make sure we focus on base on this particular one so i'm going to go to service i'm going to go to base online tool uh you'll notice that there are two tools here uh we have a legacy cross rail design tool which a lot of customers asked us to keep up there but today we're going to be demonstrating base here's the splash page for base this is what you'll see when you click on that uh, there's instructional videos in here, resources. I'm going to go to start base. If you don't have an account, very simply, it'll just ask you for some basic information, email, create your own password. We authenticate usually same day and are able to get you started. So I'm going to click on start base. It'll open a fresh tab. It'll recognize me as the login. You'll see that my name's uh, over here on the left hand side. Make this pack. Um, we also have a splat in this uh, uh, dashboard page. We also have some of our instructional videos with uh, with uh, with our products and how to use Base on the side. Um, the one thing that you'll notice right here on the splash page is that we do have the ability to start a new project, open a project, save your project, and download. We have the ability to actually download your project. And let's say as an installation crew, you guys have maybe two or three logins with the actual platform and you guys are using it to design uh, multiple different projects and share them. So people can, uh, let's say, you know, somebody's had a, 
been using base a little bit longer. So you create or start a project and then you'll ask maybe a manager or somebody who has more experience with K2 uh, base tool to critique it. You can download that project from right where you left off and send it over to a team member or us uh, to look at your project if you need any support with it. So a uh, very helpful tool to be able to download your file, open your file and have somebody else support it and look at exactly what you did. So uh, we're very, very excited to have that feature. Um, so this dashboard area, you'll see here, I, uh, you'll see here that we have uh, completed projects realized. This gives you an ability from the top down to see how many projects you have in staging, or how many projects you have completed. And uh, we have realized, which is basically, you know, let, let's say that this is postponed or we're gonna return to that project in the future. Um, uh, same file, same, uh, uh, project uh, file click boxes are right here for new project, open project. Uh, we do have a mobile app that is only really working in Europe right now, but you are able to use our base tool over Chrome if you want to for like an iPad. I've been able to successfully use it. Um, an open project from file, that's where you would actually, after you've downloaded a file from, uh, from our tool or from another uh, user's uh, uh, project, that's how you'll be able to open it. Excellent. You'll also notice here that uh, the, the, we have uh, these project, roof, design, loads, results, and uh, summary. All of these objects are what you're going to use to consistently move through the tool to get to the results and summary. Uh, the tool doesn't lead you astray and let you click into objects that uh, are not filled out yet. So hopefully that it can aid you with why it's highlighted red and these are shaded out gray. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to demonstrate for you if I was uh, if I was a solar installation outfit, and let's say that we started a project with the client, we sold the job, and then now what if what if later on the uh, that same client within that same month wanted to add on to the system, and how would we be able to make those changes and then export it over to the Solar Edge designer so we can actually plug in the monitoring? So uh, as I can continue to go on here, I'll kind of explain how that actually works. So the first thing we're gonna do is start a new project. So I'm gonna click on new project here. Um, our system, our base tool actually starts you off in the United States, if that's where you're actually, your account is held. So if your account is, is uh, held in the, like Mexico, it'll start you off in Mexico. But uh, we do require a zip code or an address to actually physically work and draw the array onto the, property that you are prospecting to uh, deploy equipment to. So I just happen to know of a good property to check out here in, um, in the Bay Area, in the Valley, which is doesn't have solar on it yet. So uh, we're prospecting to get this, uh, this client's business. This is on Vintner Way. And this is actually where the naming convention of projects really kind of takes place in making sure that you're able to name a project properly. So the address is here but we're gonna call this particular project Tile Roof House. Uh, K2 has recently uh, released a whole suite of tile hooks and tile replacement flashings. So we have the ability to uh, uh, deploy tile hooks and our racking system onto this customer's property. Let's call this the Tile House um, and exporting projects over to the Solar Edge designer. Uh, naming conventions are very, are, are very important. So if we already have a project called Tile House, maybe, let's call this one the Pack Tile House, my last name. Um, let's say they have a planned installation date of, oh, let me get this bar out of the way here. Uh, they have a planned installation date of end of the month. Um, we do have the ability to uh, do uh, current standards, which are 710, and we are working on ASCE 716. It's in its final stages of getting implemented in here, but our default is 710 for now. Uh, any kind of static customer information can be placed into this field of the project. Let's say we're just, uh, I'm the author of this project, but let's say that this is for, uh, you know, Bob Pack. <laughs> Uh, any contact info you want to put here, like a phone number. If you guys use any kind of tags in your uh, customer database or any kind of uh, uh, platform that you use to track your projects already, you know any of your uh, any of your customer relationship software, you can add that tag here and track that project by that tag. Uh, from here, all you need to do is hit continue, and this will bring us on to a top view of the actual roof for that project. 
And then we're gonna zoom in just a little bit tighter here on this project. And I'm gonna draw a roof outline, but I've also noticed that there's definitely a destruction right there. So let's go ahead and click add. And it's just uh, catching up here. Sometimes at 1025, my internet speed slows down. <laughs> but, uh, and it's gonna ask us, uh, some common uh, roof and architecture information right here in the uh, roof stage of it right here. It's gonna ask us, what type of building are we dealing with? Is this a hipped roof? Is this a flat roof? Is this a gabled roof? Uh, so we're gonna select gabled, which is basically means that it's a, 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 a triangular structure. Um, so we're gonna click gabled. It's gonna ask us, what is the actual roof shape of what we wanna design on? This primarily looks like a rectangle on the south face, uh, the southwest face of this house. So we're going to select rectangle. And this particular house has, of course, a tile roof on it. From there, we're going to say we can put in any other roof information that we'd like to put in there. So let's just say this is the second floor. Excellent. Now we have the ability, you know, this that my cursor has turned into a crosshair, but let's get just a little bit tighter in there. And this is one of the best things about designing on a Google map or on a top view is that you can actually get inline dimensions of that property. So we know that this roof is most likely about maybe 52 and a half uh, feet across. So let's go ahead and click that right there. 52.5 is fine with me. So now I've just drawn that uh, left to right horizontal. And now we're gonna drive, uh, draw perpendicular up the roof. We're going to click to the top there. And then we're going to assign, and it's asked us now, what is the height of the actual building? Well, this particular building on the second floor, this is just about over 24 feet. And the notes that we have from our site surveyor who went out to this house already to talk to them, he could estimate that this roof was at a maybe an 18 uh, degree pitch. We have the roof covering is tile, but let's say somebody made a mistake there and it wasn't tile. So here we can actually select different options for the actual roof covering. And we also have rafter spacing. If you really wanna get granular with some of the, uh, some of the architectural uh, details of the actual project, you can uh, edit this to something like 16 inches on center, or you know, let's say it's something really unique, like you know, maybe it's uh, you know 20 inches on center. So all buildings are relatively the same, but some of them are different. Let's continue to drive on so I can get you guys over to the solar edge portion. I'm gonna click continue here. Uh, we remember that there was an obstacle right here. So base automatically assumes there could be an obstacle there. You can bypass this if you don't want to just by simply clicking continue. But if we do know that there's an ob object there, we can actually select it, highlight it, and then we can actually draw around it. And this will prevent it from transferring over to the Solar Edge Design Tool as well. The Solar Edge Design Tool will recognize the same exact object that we draw here. So let me just go ahead and zoom in a little bit further. I'm gonna click add, but I'm also gonna say that this is obstacle one or obstruction one, which is a roof vent. I'm gonna click add. And I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit more so I can get a little bit closer on that. And you notice that my cursor is turned into a crosshair so I can actually draw. And I'm gonna click along the side here. That's probably about a two foot by, you know, two foot by one and a half roof vent. Let's go ahead and fully cover that. So now this obstruction that we've drawn on this particular uh, roof plane is now gonna transfer over to any of the any any of the data that we have here, including everything inside base, it'll show that roof uh, that obstruction right there. We can even put a height to it as well. Um, let's say, for instance, it was like 0.2 of a foot. Really, not that tall. Maybe only like you know uh, four inches or three and a half inches tall. Uh, we can also put in show shading as well. Um, but uh, there's plenty of options here to keep going with. You can click show shading, or you can omit it if you don't want it. I'm going to click continue any remarks that you have to put about this, let's say that that vent might need to be replaced. You can put a note there. Uh, driving on here, we're gonna select our modules. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and select these Axitec modules. These are the ones I use the most. What BASE has a, a vast library of modules that are available to us. You can even put your own custom module inside, uh, but I usually, uh, it also remembers the modules that you use the most. Uh, top three and even up to top five modules that you select the most by manufacturer. So I'm going to click uh, Axis Tech. Uh, we're going to go with uh, the three, the 365 all black. 
next thing you know is the dimensions of the module pop up just so you have a common understanding of what the the, the actual uh, dimensions are that you're working with. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out just a little bit so you can see the roof a little bit better and click continue. The first thing that are available to you in the design parameter here uh, are, are our cross rail system. Um, if you are working with composition shingle, you can also do our shared rail application as well. But for tile, we're going to rely on cross rail. And it gives you a little illustration of what that is. It's basically two rails across the roof horizontally to lay the modules down in portrait. You can also select uh, what orientation you want. If you'd like to fill the complete roof square that you have, it'll fill the complete roof. If you'd like to draw the area of where you would like the modules to go, you can click module array, which is the default. And we're gonna select a portrait uh, array. I'm gonna click add. Again, my tool, my cursor is gonna turn into a crosshair to let me draw where the array is gonna go. I'm gonna start from here from the bottom left all the way to the top right and stay within the parameters of what we drew. And the tool automatically recognized the obstruction that we had there. Uh, so with that said, uh, you have a little bit more data right here on the mounting system that you want to use for this particular array. We do offer portrait, landscape, and a special feature called portscape, which is where you can actually tell it to put the uh, top row in landscape or the bottom row in landscape and keep portrait on the top or the bottom. Um, I'll just show that really quick here, how that works. So you have the ability to do that very easily, or you could just go with none, which puts it right back at portrait. We can even move the array inside of this plane if we want to. So I could take this and I could nudge it over just to give my installer a little bit more room to install uh, next, to that, uh, next to that roof vent. From there, um, we have the ability to switch clamps to silver or to black. Uh, I'm going to leave it on middle finish rail and we're going to click we did exactly what the client wants here is a 9.8 kilowatt system is what we were prospecting to do. Going to click continue. Um, from here, it's just telling us that we uh, we allow for a thermal break, which is every 14 modules. Uh, and then moving forward, hit continue to get over to loads. Uh, we take weather data that's automatically pulled by the zip code. Looks like we had a little bit of a bug here. Um, it's not populating with the wind speed there. I'm going to go ahead and click to manual and get the wind speed in that area as a maximum of 90 miles per hour. Oh, oops. it's a maximum of 110 miles an hour. Moving on, click continue. It gives us a top down view of what the actual layout of mounting and rail would be on this particular property. We have our full menu of different tile hooks. Uh, this particular project is going to be calling out for our nine inch base tile hook, but we also have our adjustable uh, 3S all aluminum hook, which gives us a really strong span here. Uh, but this particular client was uh, interested in making sure that we use stainless steel hooks on this particular project. So we're going to go with the universal standard nine inch hook. All of this product information is available uh, at some of the, uh, on our website now. We're going to be using our base rails as our cross rail 44, which is our recently released uh, uh, lighter duty, not lighter, not lighter in engineering, but lighter in the carrying weight. And this particular roof is a W tile. So we're going to be using tile replacement flashings for all of the tile hooks that we're going to install there. We have plenty of video content on how that's done. And I'm going to go ahead and select ever flash W tile. Excellent. So that's going to populate in my bill of materials for every tile hook that I have. It'll give me a W tile flashing. Uh, we also offer right out, to, we automatically default to give you wire management solutions. Wire management's a big deal in this industry, especially when it comes to connecting optimizers, making sure that we uh, make, make sure that those power optimizers last a very long time, manage the cable very efficiently. Our rail has the ability to tuck the cables in there and we give you an abundance of different accessories to actually uh, put the uh, wire, keep it uh, nice and tucked away. Uh, you can use, you, you have the freedom of using zip ties if you want, but we try to make sure that we default you to our hay clip, which is our stainless steel option. Uh, we have our omega clip, which clicks to the side of the rail. It holds the MC4 connectors very uh, secure. And we also have our top channel clip, our TC wire management clip, which automatically populates in there. Uh, this particular uh, client didn't want to see any shiny stainless steel clips, so we're going to omit them. And all of our wire management clips are uh, dark. So you know, uh, we're gonna go ahead and click the Omega clip and the TC clip. I'm gonna click continue 
And what this is finally going to do is get us over to the summary, which is our bill of materials, uh, all of the equipment we're going to need to install this system. And then from there, we'll show you how to click once and get this information pushed over to Cameron. Oh, sorry, uh, gonna, uh, it's just an analysis real, real quick here, making sure that we uh, take a look at all the splice connectors and it's letting us know that everything is in order, uh, giving us a little bit of uh, the, the engineering information already for the system and the cantilevers on the rail. And last but not least, here is our project in full. We have a 9.8 kilowatt system with a 27 module array of these Axitech 365s. All of the racking equipment we would need uh, if, you, if you hover over these systems, you can actually see our products here. So, and uh, we'll be updating this with a lot more of our system here, universal standard hook. That's the tile hook we're going to be offering. Um, we'll get some of these images updated for you so you can have a visual of them. Uh, and this is where you get your generated bill of materials for this project. From here, I'm gonna click save. And we're gonna make sure that we have uh, all this data saved in our, in our project files here on the base tool. With that said, uh, we have the ability to generate a PDF report if we want to, and we can actually go over this report and get an assembly plan, uh, full project data, all the static information of the client. Uh, this is a residential install, so we're going to omit that ballast plan, and we're going to hit generate, and I'm going to make sure I save enough time for Cameron to demonstrate his uh, the attributes of the Solar Edge designer, so uh, we'll, we'll do this later. I wanted to hover over how to get to the Solar Edge designer. So we use a plugin called uh, K2 Plus Inverter Designer. When I click on this, and that's why I made sure I was signed into my SolarEdge account already. Uh, we offer uh, an abundance of different uh, inverter manufacturers, but I'm gonna click the SolarEdge Designer and we're gonna take this project right here and we're gonna push all of this information over to Cameron live right now. All I have to do is click on this and it'll be saved into my account for the solar edge designer it's exporting it right now right. and then thank from you. here i'll be able to email this over to cameron and he can open it yeah thank you nick so like just want to reiterate this extra step where uh, nick is going to share the design with me isn't going to be required for you because you will have your k2 account and you will also <laughs> have your solar edge account but because I work for solar edge and nick works for uh, k2 he has to share the design with me so yep. go ahead so, and uh, did you already do that? I don't know if you did. Go ahead and click the- I'm gonna, uh, go, here to, I'm gonna go here to my folder up on the top. And um, this is the pack tile house right here. And we're gonna have the share button right here. And I'm gonna go share with users. And I'm gonna click Cameron. I think, it, I, think I already had you in here. Yeah, I thought you and did that's too. And that's Cameron. Dot Stewart. Yep, S-T-E-W-A-R-T. At solar and, edge. Solar edge. Yep. and then make sure you change my rights to can edit. <laughs> yes, can edit is what we want. Can view, can edit.com. And this will show up. Click, click the plus button. Fantastic, so you've added, you've added me. Uh, so now I'm gonna go ahead and start sharing my screen. Excellent, excellent. Do I need to just stop sharing my, my screen? I, I, so. I don't I don't think so. It says it says that I can just boot you off. <laughs> Excellent. So uh, just to reiterate, you see my uh, uh, my designer that I have open. Yes, we do. Fantastic. All right, cool. So you can see that just right now I've got a whole bunch of you know solar edge uh, stuff in the designer. Uh, this is from all solar edge users uh, that work for solar edge. So I have to specifically look for um, Pack tile. Uh, I have to specifically look for the design that Nick just did. And you can see it's right here at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And again, you wouldn't have to do this, <laughs> this step, you know, if you're within your own company sharing designs. It's just Nick and I because we, again, work for two different companies. All right. So as you can see, all the information is already ported over. So you already named the project, you already did the address, you already got the satellite imagery, you've already done some site modeling. You've already put in the roof, right? And so the roof is has been designed. Uh, you've already put in PV modules. So the PV modules are already in there. So all that information has already ported from the K2 system directly into the Solar Edge designer. So I'm gonna just run with this real fast so we can see how quickly we can go to validate 
all of the racking, all of the structural design to all the electrical work. So let's just start with this design from right here. So the next step would be, where do we connect electrically to this system? So my tool, the Solar Edge Designer is gonna make an automatic recommendation. And you know what? I'm gonna see if I can turn on my camera because I feel like I'm talking to myself. Nope, host still says no, Cameron, you're not allowed to show yourself. Let it's me cool. find out what I need to do to do that. <laughs> yeah, no worries, no worries. Uh, so right now you can see that we have our inverter recommendation. It's recommending the 10,000 H. Now the oversizing on that as it sits on this system was like a nine, it was a 9.8 something KW system. 99% uh, is a little low. So I'm gonna just take the slider and just jam it all the way up to 200% to see what's the smallest inverter I could use. And the smallest inverter is a SE6000 energy hub. And that oversizing is 164%. That's a little extreme to me. So I'm gonna change it to the 7,600 energy hub. And that oversizing is 130%. That's actually kind of my target. I usually try to go between 125 and 135. So you can use that slider to help you select an inverter. So if I drop this down to 135, it, it, should, it should keep my 7,600 as the recommendation. The power optimizers that we're recommending are the P401s with this, op, with this specific module in this zip code and region. Uh, so the only compatible optimizers with this module is the 401 and the 505. So we're gonna keep the 401, usually we default to the most economic solution. And if I wanted to string my own system, I can, but I can click this auto string button and the auto string button will just automatically string the system for me. So it's, it's recommending a string of 13 and a string of 14. So I'm just gonna click generate and boom. Now the electrical design is done. I'm gonna say my inverter probably exists somewhere in space down here. Uh, the financials. So if we're just trying to validate design, typically we just move past the financials. Uh, but you know, I'll, I'll show you, we'll do the design again and we'll do the full house design so you can see what it looks like to finish do a complete design modeling the entire house. But I just wanted to show you how quickly you can go from K2 to Solar Edge and have a validated electrical design in conjunction with your structural design from K2. So again, here's our system overview, 27 solar panels, one inverter, 27 optimizers. Oh, the system price that I've got locked in here, that's coming from the financials. So it defaults to what I put in last and I put in 365 a watt was the last uh, price I put in. You can change the pricing to whatever you want or you can actually completely admit this step if you don't want it to show up in the summary reports. Um, so, yeah, so just like two, I think it was like three clicks of a button really, and it took me longer to explain what I was doing than anything. And then now we, now we have this uh, energy analysis and we can see this system is gonna produce 16 megawatt hours annually. It was, yeah, 9.86 kilowatts peak. We're gonna see a little bit of clipping in July, uh, not a lot, total clip energy is like less than a percent. So by the end of year two or year four, that would be completely, would completely go away. Uh, and then down here we can see system losses. So again, I just want to reiterate how quickly you can get a completely valid design from structural to electrical. Uh, and if this is all you wanted to do, this was the bare minimum and all you want to do, then you just click the export button and you can create a site on the Solar Edge monitoring portal with all this information. Uh, your project name, when it goes to the portal, should be whatever you track your projects with. So some people do like a last name and a four digit code. Some people do their customer's name. Some people only put codes at all, like a six digit character, uh, but it's completely up to you. I like a little more personal touch. So like mine is my, uh, my last name and, and uh, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I have installed on my site. So I'm gonna click cancel because I don't need to create a new site. So now, now that we saw the expediency, I just wanna do a quick design of what is the power of the Solar Edge tool? So we're gonna go back to project information. If you were to create the design from scratch, or you just wanted to edit all of the things that uh, that Nick ported over, K2 ported over. Uh, let's look at even ported came Bob Pack came in as a company instead of as our customer. So maybe that's a that's something I need to fix on my side. <laughs> so we'll put that. No worries. I will say uh, we'll call it K2 Edge. 
<laughs> it's I, like it. I like it. I like uh, it. And we'll say it, that. Go ahead, Cameron. Not to interrupt you, but uh, as the installation company, we just heard back from Bob Pack. And they're planning on getting an EV, so we need to actually up, uh, put more modules on the roof. So I'll be sending you a new design right now. Okay, cool. So let's actually go ahead from that new design. And uh, did you already share it? I'm sending it in a couple minutes. Just give okay. me a couple seconds here, and it's on its way. Unacceptable. I'm just. Kidding. <laughs> so I'll just uh, I'll just keep on going through here, uh, and then actually no, we'll just we'll just wait for the new design to come through. And I'm sure it's going to be like packed tile house, uh, numeral dose or something like that. Numeral dose. <laughs> Let me click save real quick. And it should be uploading to Solar Edge in a couple of seconds here. Cool. So I guess while we're waiting, let's, uh, let's describe some of the other things uh, so I don't have to, so we don't have to recover it. So the consumption is basically how much energy the pack house uses. So you can take their historic bill and you can say, well, they use 12,000 kilowatt hours annually and they are typically working from home because, you know, a lot of people work from home these days. So we're going to click the re retirees or working from home profile and you can edit these and create your own custom profile or you can upload green button data. So if you live in California, you know what green button data is, you can uh, basically it's a big green button that you push from your, your utility and it gives you an Excel spreadsheet of, of your consumption in every day of the year, every hour. So you can upload that green button data. If you don't have that information, you can say, oh, I don't have the monthly numbers. You can edit the monthly numbers. Uh, you can create a custom profile, it's super easy to do. So all we're trying to understand is how these people use energy in their home and how much solar energy is gonna offset this used energy. So we'll say that. Uh, so again, Nick is gonna send me a new design. So we're gonna just enter 12,000 kilowatt hours annually. The electricity grid, that basically specs our inverter. This is what chooses our inverter for us. So let's go back to, um, to here and we're gonna search pack tile house again. I might have to refresh. Let's go ahead and refresh. Give me one second here. I just gotta put plug in your, your name, V2 here. Oh man, you're killing me. You're killing me. <laughs> I promise it'll be faster next time. I know I, pour, I know I ported it over. It should be here. Pack tile house V2. Oh man, it's oh. Uh, it, it's live demos. It, it, you always find the bug on the live demo, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Let's go one more time to export it over. Solar designer. I got it saved on my end. All right. I think I, there it is. It's here. I'm there gonna, it is. I'm gonna show it. it right now. I got it. It just took a little while for the interwebospheres to talk. Okay, so fantastic. So uh, Nick told us that he added some more modules. So let's look at what he added uh, because there, it looks like he added a second roof down. Uh, so I'm yep. just going to look at a 3D image. So we uh, added the second roof. So let's go back to the project info. And again, we know that they're going to use uh, 12,000 kilowatt hours annually, but we really want to make sure that they are, the system is oversized because they're planning on getting that EV. So they're going to use more energy, right? So if we, right. If we, go, if we go back to the site modeling, we can see that uh, Nick drew these uh, two roofs that we're going to install solar panels on as two different entities. And that's how the K2, uh, K2 tool works uh, as two separate entities. So when we go into PV module placement, again, all this stuff is still there. We can go back to electrical design. And now that we have more modules, we actually may be using a larger inverter. So again, I typically design to 135. Um, and it looks like 10,000 is going to be the inverter that we're going to use here. I'm going to click generate. Oops, I forgot to string it. No big deal. So we'll just click the auto string button. And looks like we're going to do three strings here. We're going to do a string of 13, a string of 14, and a string of eight. And the tool is always going to try to separate strings 
that are on different roof surfaces. So you'll never see, even though like if it was a more balanced system and you want to do like you know, three strings of basically 12, two strings of 12 and a string of thir uh, 11, um, you could theoretically split the string down here, but that's just a lot of balance of system and no one would ever want to do that. So the tool is always going to try to separate those strings for you. And then you get to summary reports and you can see, okay, well, oops, I forgot to click <laughs> accept. That's what I wanted to do. So the uh, tool was giving me a warning that I didn't have any uh, optimizers or yeah, any modules strung to optimizers strung to the inverter. So I'm going to click summary and reports. Okay, fantastic. So now we can see that we have the two roof surfaces uh, and we can see what, because we put in our consumption, and again, we're still at like 365 a watt. We see the system price is $46,000 here. Uh, let's dive in a little bit while I have some time into the financials. So we put 12,000 kilowatt hours annually. We said there are retirees working from home, but if we know what their utility is, so probably here, they're Pacific we, Gas and Electric, and they're probably- on Yes, a they are. Yeah, they're probably on a TOU rate. So I'm just going to find the TOU rate that most people are on, yep. which is- They're on option B. Option B, fantastic. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to, that's what we're going to put in. And if, if you didn't know what, if you wanted to validate what the TOU rate that we have here is, we can uh, look at the rate overview. We can see, okay, this is a time wow. of use rate. And then from like weekdays from uh, June to September, from midnight to- uh, three o'clock in the afternoon, that's off peak time. But the second that they get to four o'clock to nine o'clock, that's a uh, rate two, which is 37 cents here. And then outside of that is 21 cents. And then we can see, we can structure and stack these different TOU rates for seasons. So uh, by month and then also by week, weekdays versus weekends. So we see weekends are just pretty easy off peak time and then on peak time. So 21 or one is on peak time. So 21 cents and, and 27 cents. So Still that's what they're finding more features, Cameron. This is, this is tremendous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. We're always, we're always trying to do cool, innovative things. So now that we've selected this rate, we can actually build in an incentive too. We can say, Oh, they're going to take advantage of the ITC. And the ITC is like 26% oh, of the system costs up to this amount of money is a tax credit, so that's going to come off the total cost. So we go back to somewhere in reports, and now we're going to see what the $46,000 system price uh, turns into. So we have $46,000, and now the net present value of the system is $12,000 $12, in the positive. So your system is going to make money for you. We can see that the system production is going to produce 21 megawatt hours annually wow. uh, versus what we, again, we said the consumption is currently 12, but we know they're getting an EV, so we know this is going to go up. The self-consumption is 5.64, and so we're going to import 6.36. And this just is taking into account that you have no net metering, you're not selling back to the utility. Uh, so really, this would be a credit. So whatever you export, 15.76 would be credited. Uh, if, if you have net heater, right? And so you can see the month over month, what the consumption versus the production is uh, and where that exists in space. Now, if we were to add a battery to si the system, and this is gonna be my last point because I know we have to take uh, so, some questions at the end here. If we wanna add a battery, we just click on the inverter. We have to make it a, a battery capable inverter. And you know what, I'm going to go to the other design yeah, I'll just do this one. It's fine. So let's say this is a, a 7600 energy hub, and we're going to add the 16H Resu Prime. I'm going to do that. Okay, so now our DC to AC ratio is at 168%. So this is not typically a design I would do, but uh, you can totally do this design. It's, it's allowed. So with the energy hubs, we're allowed to go 200% DC to AC ratio. So now let's okay. look at the su summary and reports. So now we can see we're going to take a lot of this excess um, uh, excess production and we're going to put it into a battery. So now you can see our self-consumption just goes way up. 
because we're taking all of our extra production and just storing it into a battery. Uh, so our export drops down because again, we're using all that energy that we generate. Uh, our system price might change because you added a battery, you know, maybe it's like 50 cents more a watt. So let's change that over real fast to here. And we'll say, oh, it's actually now my battery systems I'm selling for $4 a watt. So that's what you can say there. And let's reflect that in our summary reports. So you can, you can quickly and easily edit these designs. And then at the top here, if you wanted to just toggle between the two designs, you can duplicate this, I'm gonna duplicate. And you can say, uh, I'm gonna rename this one, rename. And we'll just say uh, Sans battery, Sans battery. So we'll, we'll change this design and we'll make this design without the battery. So these right now, these two designs are identical, but Sans battery, I'm just gonna delete the battery. And so we can just go back and forth and see See what it looks like. So I'm going to click edit, uh, no battery, done. And then wow. let's go back to the summary reports. So now we can see just the difference of what our production looks like with a battery versus without a battery. So we can see uh, the system price is probably going to go down back to 365 watt. Uh, 365. Cool. Uh, and so now we can have two reports very quickly, easily toggle, toggleable. Is that a word? Toggleable? <laughs> uh, toggleable. So, <laughs> toggleable. So we can see that the system production has changed vastly. You know, at, we're exporting, we're not putting anything into a battery, we're just giving it all to the grid versus this design where you can see now we're exporting a lot less, we're storing it all in the battery. About 46% of our energy is coming from that battery. So just the power of this tool. Uh, is is vast and difficult to get across. And I know that's my time. So I'm going to say thank you for letting me go a little bit long. Uh, we still have time for questions. Awesome. Thank, thank you, Nick and Cameron. Um, so we do have a couple questions in here. Um, let's see. We'll start with this question from Daniel. What system do you recommend for installation on a concrete slab ceiling, given an inclination of 20 degrees in a building with a height of 18 meters? Concrete slab ceiling. Um, yes. I don't find those uh, at 20 degrees. Yes. Interesting, interesting. Man, I might actually pass that over to Miguel actually who does who deals with a lot of our uh installs in Mexico uh the concrete slab is uh is very uh, uh affluent throughout that area uh, they run into it often um we do have a flat roof attachment called the t-foot uh which we can make sure that you get a briefing of but there are multiple different anchoring methods for uh mounting into slab concrete most important is to uh make sure that you check with the architect of record that it's not a tension pulled system. Um, that if it's a standard rebar uh, style construction uh, is definitely sa safer. So I don't know how uh, many times you guys would run into a tension pulled system, but they do it actually uh, a lot more here in the United States and in the West Coast. For instance, the foundation of my home is actually a tension, tension pulled slab, which uh, entry into the concrete slab uh, has to be done with uh, special tools to uh, make sure that you don't actually hit the cables that are inside of that concrete slab. So with that said, we do offer a flat roof footing where you, and it uh, ships without, uh, without anchors in it. So you can select what anchors that you would like to use for your project. And we can definitely get you a briefing with that product. Cool, thank you. Um, and what is the, structural life guarantee. So I guess what's our warranty for the structure? Our, oh, our warranty for the structure or for our products? Because we actually- As structure we, in the question. Oh, um, I can send you the information on our product warranty, but uh, as far as the structure goes, um, you know, we, we can't really warrant to the structure we can only warrant the performance of the components of our system that we're responsible for. So uh, we did not manufacture or uh, build the st structure. 
so I can send you uh, our, our warranty is uh, here under uh, a ble uh, under contact. Uh, you can get our actual, uh, or is it, did we move our under warranty over to company? Downloads and documentation. Down, I apologize for that. Our, our warranty is here under downloads documentation and you can review our warranty right here. And our warranty is 25 years for K2 products. I'm not sure Sorry, if thank, you- Thank you for answering that for me, Dakota. Okay. I apologize. Cameron, I don't know if you guys have a warranty for Solar Edge. do you know? Yeah, so it's a uh, standard 12 years for our inverter. Uh, for residential, you can expand it to 20 or 25. Uh, if it's a commercial inverter, you can expand it to 20 years maximum. Our optimizers are a standard 25 year warranty. So our, our rule is anything on the roof is gonna have a 25 year warranty. So the power optimizers, the K2 racking, the modules, all in 25 year warranty. Uh, and then on the ground, yeah, where you know electronics is is difficult to warrant. It's not like a piece of aluminum, but it is one of the industry best standard warranties, which is a twelve year warranty. Awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, next question is from Gary. Um, if it is a ground grid, does a roof still need to be drawn? No, if it's uh oh sorry, that's probably best for K two. <laughs> uh, so uh, that I, it might be, but I'll let Cameron finish that too. So the base design tool right now is only optimized for rooftop installations. We do have a guide on how to size our system for uh, our Crossrail 80, which is our ground mounted system. So reach out to us in regards to that. We will be introducing ground mounts into the base design tool. Uh, it's just taking a little bit more time to refine it and uh, make sure that it's compatible with how uh, the user interface already works. So it is coming to base very soon. Yeah, and just to, uh, to add on to that, so if you're doing ground mounts with uh, the Solar Edge designer, all you have to do is just draw a big square. You don't need to assign a height or anything to it, just draw a big square so it allows you to drop some modules and you just click a button and say, this is a tilt kit, it's super easy to do. And then looks like the last question we had in here was, I think this is for you, Cameron. Um, looks like when you were doing your design, there might've been something that came up that said, warning, connecting three strings. What does that mean? Oh yeah, yeah. so that was just a warning. Um, so basically the, the 7600, that inverter is designed for two string inputs because when we first launched the energy hub, the maximum dc to ratio was 155%. So 15 kilowatts can be achieved with our design, um, excuse me, 12 kilowatts can be achieved with our design on two strings. So there wasn't a lot of people that did more than two strings. So that's just the maximum number of strings for the inverter. When you go above that, so now we're getting into 15 kilowatts uh, for the 200% DC to AC ratio. Uh, the, there's just not enough string input. So the tool is giving you a warning that says, hey, you have designed this system with three strings. You will need to parallel these strings before you get to the inverter just because there's not a lot of inputs. So the tool will always give you a warning if, uh, if, uh, if you forget to string a, an optimizer or a module, you forget, uh, or your DC DC ratios is uh, too high, or you selected a battery capable inverter, but you didn't add a battery to it. So we'll always give you those kind of, that immediate feedback as you use the tool. It's a great thing to have prompts like that, just to make sure that you have awareness of the equipment. Um, yep. We also have those same things uh, in base. There are uh, modules out there that are not designed for uh, hidden end clamping, or if there is clamping on the interior flange of the module, uh, we actually make sure to bring that up to you when you select from our menu of modules. If there is, and you, and you would like to use our hidden end clamps, we've researched all the dimensions and, and capabilities of module, frame, uh, module frames that are accepted with hidden end clamps and the ones that do not accept them. So we have prompts and warnings on our platform for uh, issues like that as well. 
Awesome. And lastly, uh, Nick, I, I think maybe just share the slide with your contact info because we have people asking for your information. And then um, we also have all of our technical sales team info on the K2 website. So if you go to our contact tab and click find your sales rep, all of our sales team information will be there as well. Absolutely. Like I want to thank Cameron for uh, joining us again. Let's do more of these. Uh, and next time, I promise to give you more time on your portion of the tool. Uh, <laughs> I hope we split. I hope we split it 50-50 in the right manner. I, I did have my stopwatch going, so I was trying to keep mine under 25 minutes. But uh, like I said, uh, we love working with you, Cameron. Thanks for showing up today. Yeah, man. Happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, again, if you have any questions, just uh, throw them my way, Cameron. Stuart at storage.com, or if it's more immediate because I'm amidst a battery launch right now, uh, the best way for you to get a hold of us is just go to solaredge.com, use our chat feature, and you can talk to us that way. So, again, thank you very much. I hope you guys have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it may be. Thank you all. Dakota, thank you for hosting these and making these possible as well. Uh, Miguel Luz, Brendan, uh, thank you for your time today, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Nick. Cameron. And all the participants. Have a great day, guys. You too. Thanks, y'all. Take it easy.